We're very tempted when expressing polarization states to think of them always in terms of a horizontal and a vertical component. That would be like talking about this horizontal unit vector h hat and the vertical component v hat. We already saw in the previous video that the plus and four, minus 45 degree states, we could think about a p hat vector there and m hat vector there, they're pretty simply related to the horizontal and vertical. I can write it this sort of way. I can say that p and m hat are equal to, if you will, 1 over root 2 h hat plus or minus v hat. I'm writing it this way to sort of summarize that p hat is the plus sign and m hat is if you choose the minus sign. And this is pretty easily inverted. So if we wanted to, we could express the linear states h hat and v hat. They are expressible in terms of the plus and minus 45 degree states. And that's the way that one works out. Horizontal is p hat plus m hat. The horizontal components add and the vertical components oppose. If I do p hat minus m hat, then I'm adding p hat to a vector that's pointing this way. And then the vertical components are the ones that add and the horizontal components knock each other up. We also saw in the previous video what an anti-clockwise and a clockwise state look like when you write them in the linear basis. Came out as h hat. Same idea, plus or minus i v hat. The plus sign corresponds to the anti-clockwise state. Now what happens when we try to write, do the inversion here and write the horizontal and, ver horizontal and vertical states in terms of these? Let me start by solving for h hat. It doesn't take much math to see that h hat is 1 over root 2 anti-clockwise basis state plus clockwise basis state. You just add A and C together and you can see that the H's reinforce and the V's cancel each other out. Now what does this expression mean conceptually? Well, what are A hat and C hat again? A hat is a unit vector basis state. Start, it's pointing here at time t0 and rotating anti-clockwise. That's the A hat state, to remind you. And the C hat state points the other way. So if you have A hat and C hat added together in this way, that's adding together an A hat and a C hat state. At time zero, they're both pointing to the right. That sounds good. They would add up to a horizontal vector. And I think you can picture that as you rotate one the anti-clockwise state that way and the clockwise state this way, their vertical components will always cancel, their horizontal components will always add, and you will indeed get a resultant vector that just oscillates left and right, just as you're supposed to get over here. So conceptually, this, this expression seems to make sense. Let's think about what the V state looks like. So if we want to get if we want to build a v-hat state, we would conceptually want to do the same thing we just saw, but we would have the two states, instead of the circular states phased so that they overlap when they're horizontal, we want them now to overlap when they're vertical. So we would have the a-hat state going this way, because it has to rotate anti-clockwise and the clockwise state going this way. So conceptually, we can certainly imagine how to build a vertical oscillation out of circular states A and C, just to make sure that they are their phase is such that they overlap at the top of the circle rather than at the extreme right of the circle. Now, if we think about how these directions, anti-clockwise and clockwise, compare to what we saw over here, I really need to put quote marks around these basis states because the basis states are defined to be pointing here at time t equals zero. So what we see in this case is that the C component, it's going to arrive at the start point, in other words, be horizontal, a quarter period after the overlap. So the C component 
arrives at start point, the, the point corresponding to the dot, quarter period after the overlap. And by the same token, we see that the A component is at the start point. Think about the way this counter, this anti-clockwise thing is rotating. It was pointing to the right a quarter cycle ago, and now it's overlapping here. So the A component arrives at the start point a quarter period before the overlap. We have other terms for this. You may hear me in class call this a lag. And you might see this called a lead. Or we might call this a delay. And call this an advance. Well, let's see how the math works out for this. So if we solve for v hat the same way we solved for h hat up here, we're going to find that i v hat equals 1 over root 2 a hat minus c hat. Now no quote marks. This is exactly a solution of this. If I take a hat minus c hat, I'll be able to isolate the v hat. The h hat will cancel out, and I'll get this expression here. Let me just rewrite the i as e to the i pi over 2. And I will rewrite the minus sign. Minus 1 is equal to e to the i pi. So now, if I just multiply both sides by e to the minus i pi over 2, I'll get the v hat alone over here. I'll get 1 over root 2. And look what I get. I get e to the i pi over 2 c hat, I'll take the c hat term first, plus, since I'm multiplying by e to the minus i pi over 2, the a hat will pick up a factor of e to the minus i pi over 2. For the c hat term, because I have an e to the i pi and e to the minus i pi over 2 multiplying it, that's why I got this term. So there's my expression. Remember, I said that the C component lags, and that's exactly what we saw in the previous video, that this e, multiplying by e to the minus, by e to the i pi over 2 causes a lag of a quarter cycle or a quarter period. And by the exact same math, if I see e to the minus i pi over 2, that's a lead of a quarter period. We now have a concise expression for what v hat is and h hat is. We're writing the horizontal and vertical basis in terms of the, of the clockwise and anti-clockwise basis set. Let me just consolidate that for you down here at the left. I've written it out, and I've been explicit that the v hat term, I've converted the e to the i pi over 2 and e to the minus i pi over 2 into i's. So v hat is i times c minus i times a hat. So let's just summarize what's going on here in terms of our complex number usage. Our convention is that we capture the sinusoidal time oscillations with the expression e to the minus i omega t. That's a convention for this class. It's not the same in every class that you'll take. There's a consequence now of making that convention for what we, how we, cal how we re represent the advance of time. In that sort of notation where e to the minus i omega t is the advance of phase with time, then if you multiply by e to the plus i pi over 2, 
that is a delay that causes something to to hit its hit the start point uh, a quarter cycle later than something that's oscillating like the basis vector itself and if I multiply by e to the minus i pi over 2 that's an advance this summarizes the way we use complex numbers for oscillations in optics 2 at 62. When you multiply an oscillation by e to the i pi over 2, you're now causing it to, if you will, slow down. It will reach that its start point. It's what we mark with the red dots. It reaches that red dot a quarter cycle later than the basis state itself.